All right. Welcome back. Uh, I think we're in what episode four. Um, so I think uh, last time we talked about searching for the law school that's most suitable for you. We didn't spend much time on the uh, the, the specific programs. So today I want to talk a little bit about uh, four of the hybrid programs that I was able to find. All right, let's get into it. So we're going to start with Mitchell Hamline, and uh, that is located in St. Paul, Minnesota, not Minneapolis, like I said last time, but I did correct that in a little graphic on the video. Um, so their program, they, they've made a few changes to it this year. Um, and you can go to their webpage and it's really, it's really informative. Um, so this video, I'm going to be putting up a lot of information on the screen. So if you need to pause the video to write down some URLs, which I'll also put down in the description of the video, um, unless you're on Instagram, you won't be able to see that. So if you are, then just come on over to my YouTube and check it out and you can just hit the buttons and go, go through the links uh, in the description. Um, so this year, and this is what I didn't know last week, uh, while Mitchell Hamline has had a hybrid program this year and just launching this fall, they've combined some different uh, uh, special programs into what they're calling now a, uh, a blended a blended program. So uh, the idea behind their new blended program is they're taking the best of what they have to offer from their hybrid, um, their executive program, and their weekend offerings to give, I guess it's, it's a little bit more flexible and it meets more students' needs. Um, this is a four-year program to complete and it looks like you you have to be on campus two times per semester. The first two years of the blended program, uh, you spend um, one third of your courses will be online and the other two thirds will be in person. Um, I'm not sure exactly how that works. I think the on campus time will be uh, very intensive but you can always call the admissions office for more information or send them an email and they'll be happy to send you more. So each semester ends with an on-campus, what they call a capstone week. So the capstone week emphasizes skills training. They use real world simulations and that's going to help students to practice their writing, negotiating, counseling, and trial skills. So it looks like the last week of each semester is going to be some pretty intensive stuff. So this program is structured to fit into your schedule. Um, so they realize the importance of your life and being able to continue with your life while they're in while you're in their program. So all of the online portions are done in your own time. So you don't have scheduled classes and set meeting times. Um, if, if going through the course material at midnight or one in the morning works best for you, then knock yourself out. This program lets you do that. So um, this program it probably takes about four years, but their website says it takes three to four years. And in your first two years, you're taking three to four classes per semester. And as we all know, or like, like Puff said, it's all about the Benjamins, baby. Was it Puff? I don't know. Anyway, so what's the cost? Uh, they estimate that it's going to be about $16,800 per semester, which 
you know, all in all, it's not that bad. We're talking about law school here, and uh, there are scholarships available. And they say that scholarships range in the neighborhood of um, 15% to 100% of tuition. So although that price point, uh, it might be a little steep if you're just looking at law schools, but that's pretty typical. But most law schools do have tuitions, uh, tuition assistance available or, or, you know, multiple types of scholarships. Okay, the next school I looked at with a hybrid program is the University of Dayton. Um, and that's, maybe that's their, yeah, that's, that's their. So the University of Dayton, they say that you can complete their program in less than four years. Uh, so, you know, three and a half years or so, that's less than four. Their program lets you attend live face-to-face -face sessions with your classmates and faculty. You can ask questions in real time. So the program says that they have 10 uh, in-person class sessions. So through the whole length of your um, three and a half, four year program, you only have to show up in date 10 times. Um, that's not bad, but that, you know, depending on how long it is, I doubt if it's more than a week, uh, but I haven't talked to the admissions office, uh, but you can, you can contact them by calling this number right here, right there, or, or shoot them an email. So that information will also be in the link. So an interesting thing on their website, they gave an estimation of how much time you're going to spend so they estimate that completing their program will take um, 16 to 30 total hours per week. Um, so you have four to 10 hours of live classroom and nine to 15 hours uh, just studying material and, uh, and um, outlining and reading. And that's the big thing about law school from what I've seen that's different from what you did in undergraduate. A lot of the law you're gonna be teaching yourself. Um, so most of the reading is, is front-loaded uh, versus uh, the, uh, your undergrad experience where you may have read ahead of class, but really when you come to class for uh, law school, you're expected to be very familiar with the material and prepare to discuss it. The next school we're going to talk about is where I'm going, uh, the Franklin Pierce School of Law at the University of New Hampshire. So this program was designed with the professional in mind, um, as typical of all of the hybrid programs that we've been looking at. Um, and, and particularly, it's really it's really uh, geared towards people working in intellectual property, uh, like me. That's what I do, IP, intellectual property. So while their hybrid program is new, their intellectual property program is not. So each year that it's been run, they've been ranked at least in the top 10 in the US News and World Report. So what you'll see if you go to their website is um, they have uh, really more in-depth information. Uh, one of our deans, Megan Carpenter, um, talks a, a lot more about the program and she talks about it for 1Ls, which is first year law students and the, and the program in general. Um, so. You know, I strongly advise taking a look at those. And you know what? I'm gonna take a little dance break. So, like the other hybrid programs that I've talked about, um, the idea is for you to be able to go to school and stay in your home. Uh, that's a very good thing. Um, so. Um, what is it like 
what's the schedule like? Um, so like the other ones, you do have to go to campus several times. Um, so what I'm doing for the fall is I have to go in uh, August for the first week, what we call an immersion period, and that's three to four days. But thanks to COVID, I'm not actually going. I'm going to do that part online. Um, I go again in October for uh, about three, four days, and it happens to cross the weekend. Uh, so you're only taking a couple days away from your work. And then the third session will be either in the spring or summer. I don't know. I think last year they did theirs in the summer. And that was also online this time because of COVID. Um, so the um, UNHS program will take you three and a half years to complete. So the cost of your education there, I think it's very reasonable. Uh, for in-state students in the hybrid program, you're going to pay $1,300 per credit. Uh, and for out of state, it's fifteen hundred per credit, and of course, both of those also include fees. So when you're budgeting, also take into account your cost of books. Um, and I, I like to buy new books because I keep them. But actually, this semester, I saw that most of my books were available in electronic format. So that's what I did. I bought all my books on the Kindle. Uh, and I think I, I spent something like $500, something like that. I didn't really add it up. Uh, it, it may have been less than that, uh, but it's not like science books, which as you know, if you did uh, hard science, science books are mad expensive. It's not like that. Most of the books I thought are very reasonably priced. So I've included links for UNH and also for those uh, links that it gets you to those two videos from Megan Dean, Dean uh, Carpenter. And okay, and finally, last but not least, I guess, um, is Syracuse University College of Law. They also have a, an online hybrid program. Um, they say you can complete your degree in three years and three months. Um, the cost of attendance for this fiscal year, uh, the 2020 um, fiscal year, is 1925 per credit. Um, and I don't know if they have a different tuition for in-state, out-of-state. That's all I could find, and the information on their website, um, as far as the nuts and bolts of their hybrid program, um, it was pretty skimpy. Um, so th there's not a lot I could dig out of that, and I was too lazy to call them. Uh, but um, if you need to, if you want to talk to them, the contact information is right there. Um, Give them a call, shoot them an email, um, whatever. Um, and like I said, the links and phone numbers and everything for this video, if you're watching on YouTube, they're all down there in the description. Um, so I'll, I'll leave you with this. Um, as you're applying, I know you have certain ideas for what you think you should get for a score on the LSAT. And I have my mine too which I'm not going to share because that could discourage some people or it might give some others too much confidence uh, but you know whatever it is just go for it um, and if you're really concerned every school's website by law they have to have the ABA data so that's the information on the scores from the incoming class and their uh, are, are the last, usually it's like last year's class. Um, they'll put a range of their, their LSAT scores if that's something they take into consideration and their average GPAs. So take a look at that and that'll help you get an idea of where you wanna come in on your testing. Um, so like I said before, um, 
if you're gonna do it, just do it. Don't worry about uh, being too old or it being too late because like I keep saying, it's never too late. And uh, you know, I was talking to someone last week and we were talking about getting back in school and I was saying, bruh, you need to go ahead and get yourself in grad school if it's not law school, something else. And his thing was like, now I got too much going on, blah, blah, blah. And that's going to be your story for your life. You always have too much going on. And going to school, it's like having kids. There is never, ever a convenient time. You have to just make like a sneaker and just do it. Um, and what happened with me is I said, look, I'm going to just take a step out in faith. And it was the same with my undergrad. Because uh, I, I was also a non-traditional undergrad student. I said, let's take a, take a step out in faith and see what happens. Maybe God will show up. Maybe God's going to do something. And uh, what I found that happened with me, you take one step and the next thing, it's like you're being pushed through a tunnel and everything just comes together. And you'll be amazed at how fast it happens and how things can work out in your favor. Um, so if you're thinking about it, stop thinking about it and start, and start acting. So that's all for today. Um, thanks again for tuning in and if you're picking up what i'm putting down go ahead and mash that like button subscribe and also hit the notification so you'll get all of my videos um, so i enjoyed it and i'm hoping these are starting to get a little bit better um, so uh, stay safe god bless i'll see you next time